shouldn't exist, and yet here it is. That s what paleontologists whispered when they uncovered the fossil in Morocco. S red desert in 2023. A creature so bizarre it defied everything we thought we knew about evolution. Its body was serpentine, its skull unmistakably lizard-like, and yet, it had limbs. Not tiny vestiges, but full functional legs. A snake that wasn't a snake. A lizard that shouldn't have been alive in that era. Photos of the fossil ignited social media, with captions screaming, the snake-lizard hybrid that science can't explain. But behind those viral headlines lies a much deeper. Stranger truth, one that rewrites the origin story of snakes, and maybe, of evolution itself. Tonight, on Extinct Bones, we're unearthing the tale of the creature evolution tried to erase in a Josh Rianagrina, the serpent that walked. 65 million years before the first humans dreamed of dragons, long before the dinosaurs fell to ash, the southern lands of Ganwana stretched beneath a dying sun. The air shimmered with heat, red dunes rolled like an ocean of fire. In the cracks between them, a predator slid silently, each movement deliberate, its scales catching the dim light like living metal. To the creatures of this ancient desert, it was the perfect ambusher, too fast for lizards, too smart for prey. But this was no ordinary reptile. It had legs, strong clawed limbs, built for a world that was still deciding what a snake could be. Imagine the scene. The dunes hiss under the wind. A primitive mammal scurries for shade. And from the sand, Najash emerges half serpent, half lizard, its tongue tasting the air, its body coiling low, ready to strike. When paleontologists discovered its fossil in Argentina's Rio Negro region in 2006, they didn't just find bones. They found a message from evolutionist shadow proof that snakes didn't tea simply lose their legs. They chose to. But here's the twist. The fossil found in 2023 wasn't just any Najash. This one was almost perfectly preserved. Skull, spine, limbs, even traces of muscle impressions. It gave scientists something they'd never had before. A snapshot of the exact moment when evolution blurred the line between walking and slithering. And the story it told? It shattered everything we thought we knew about how snakes began. Scientists believed snakes evolved from burrowing lizards, that they lived underground, lost their legs in the dark, and eventually slithered their way to dominance. It was a neat, tidy story, till Najash crawled out of the dust and tore it apart because Najash didn't live underground. Its body wasn't built for burrowing, it was built for ambush, for striking from the open sand. It was a surface predator, a hunter, and that meant snakes didn't come from the darkness below, it came from the blazing light above. But if snakes started as hunters of the open desert, then what forced them to crawl back into the earth? Stay with me because that's where the real twist begins. As paleontologists reconstructed Najash's skeleton, they noticed something extraordinary. Its skull, though snake-like, had remnants of a movable joint that allowed it to open its mouth wide, like modern snakes do. Yet its neck bones were thicker, stronger, suggesting it could lift its head and look around, like a monitor lizard. Its hips were robust, with ball and socket joints connecting fully formed hind limbs. Each foot had tiny claws perfect for gripping sand or climbing over rocks. It was a creature caught in mid-transformation, half the flexibility of a serpent, half the stance of a lizard. Evolution had pressed pause, and Najash was the frame between worlds. Visual cue. Cut to an animation of Najash moving across the dunes, alternating between crawling and slithering, its legs pushing through red sand as its body ripples behind. But its environment was merciless. Ah. The late Cretaceous was not kind to the small or the slow, Titanosaurs roamed nearby, leaving earthquakes in their wake. Raptorial birds stalked from above. Every movement mattered, every shadow could mean death. To survive, Najash evolved speed, stealth, and flexibility. Over generations, its limbs became smaller, more specialized, for quick strikes rather than walking. Each adaptation brought it closer to what we now recognize as a true snake. Still, there was something eerie about Najash. In its skull, scientists found remnants of an ancestral feature a vestige of an ear bone that once helped it hear through the air, not the ground. That meant Najash wasn't deaf to surface sound. It could hear its prey. It listened. Around 66 million years ago, as the world teetered toward chaos, Najash and its kin faced an extinction unlike any before. The ecosystems of Gondwana were shifting. Forests burned, rivers turned to salt, and prey vanished. The serpent that walked was cornered by time itself. To adapt, evolution made a choice. It took Najash's legs and traded them for survival. The limbs that once carried it through the sand became obsolete, replaced by a body made purely for motion. And from that sacrifice the first true snakes were born. Visual cue, fade to black, followed by an animation of Najash's descendants, losing their legs over millennia, slithering through ash and sand as new continents form. But Najash wasn't gone. Fossils show its lineage persisted longer than anyone expected, hiding in ancient riverbeds, adapting quietly as the world around it changed. It's as if evolution itself hesitated to erase such a design, 
unsure if it had gone too far. Some researchers even believe that small populations of legged snakes might have survived long enough to overlap with early mammals. A living paradox slithering through Earth's dark recovery after the dinosaurs. And this is where Najasha's legacy becomes haunting. Because its fossil doesn't just show what it was. It shows what we lost. It's proof that evolution isn't a straight line, but a maze of experiments. Creatures like Najash are reminders that nature doesn't always pick the best design. Just the one that lasts. Cliffhanger moment, but what if Najash wasn't the only one? In 2015, researchers in Brazil uncovered another snake fossil, one that also had tiny functional legs. Different species, same story. That means Najash wasn't a freak accident. It was part of a trend. A whole chapter of evolution that vanished from the fossil record. How many walking snakes once roamed the world before they disappeared forever? We may never know. But every discovery pushes the boundary of what we thought possible. And every bone whispers the same message. Evolution docent. T delete. It rewrites. By the end of its lineage, Najash had almost completed its transformation. Legs reduced. It. Body lengthened. Skull reshaped for the art of swallowing prey whole. Its descendants would go on to rule forests, deserts, and seas, becoming everything from vipers to pythons to cobras. And yet, in those first few moments of change, the ones caught in red stone and fossilized sand, you can still see the hesitation of nature, the indecision between walking and slithering, between old and new. As we hold Najash's bones today, in the soft light of a museum, it's easy to forget the violence that made them. The storms, the droughts, the predators. Every scale on its body was a battle against extinction. Every adaptation was a gamble. Though its legs may be gone, its legacy crawls on. In every snake that moves like liquid shadow. It's in every motion that defies the bones it once had. Sometimes evolution's most haunting creations aren't he. The ones that thrive, but the ones that almost made it. Najash was one of them. A creature born from indecision. A reptile that challenged its own design. The snake lizard that shouldn't exist, and yet did. Thanks for watching, and until next time, on Extinct Bones.